In this presentation, we will enter a journal entry to allocate the factory overhead to work in process to allocate the factory overhead to jobs within the job cost system. We're going to enter the journal entry into our general journal. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Use that to post to our general ledger and then use the general ledger to create the trial balance, the trial balance in order of assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses, debits minus the credits equaling zero, meaning we are in balance, nothing in net income at this time. We, of course, focusing in on the inventory type accounts as we uh, track through the cost flow in the job cost system what we have at this time is we've got this uh, factory overhead number that we've been putting together and that's been everything that we couldn't apply to a job that's part of what we work on so we put indirect labor in there because we didn't know which job to put it to we put indirect materials in there because we didn't know where to put it to anything on the factory we put in there depreciation on the factory um, any any rent on the factory uh, we put into this bucket because we think it should be part of the inventory but we don't know which job and therefore couldn't put it into work in process because we couldn't support it by the job cost sheets uh, and now we're gonna have to take this bucket and somehow report it to the job cost sheets because it needs to go there some way and somehow so we have to use some type of allocation method to do that now to do that uh, we're gonna have what's known as a predetermined overhead rate so we're going to just give it to us here, which is going to be 1.6 of uh, the direct labor. And uh, so note that a little bit confusing in terms of why we would do that or how to explain it to someone why we're doing what we're doing here. What we're doing on the predetermined overhead rate is we're trying to find some kind of estimate that we can use to allocate this overhead cost to uh, the jobs. Now, if you're, if this was the problem, let's think through a few different ways how we might figure that problem out and see why people have come up with this predetermined overhead rate. So our problem is to, to apply this 7,100 to these jobs. And we have one, two, three, four, five of them. One, two, three, four, five jobs. So if we, if that was our task, just to go through the thought process, you might say first, well, if we have 7,100, and we have one, two, three, four, five jobs, we can divide by five and we can apply 1,420 to them. And that's true. There's a couple problems with that, however. Uh, first is that this number isn't known yet until the end of the month. 
So, and we can't wait till the end of the month to know what's in there. And, and usually in this problem, we've recorded it all, all of the expenses first, and then we applied it out afterwards, uh, because it's easier to see the flow that way. But in, in practice, oftentimes as we make these different jobs, we would have to apply out overhead to them when we finish the job so that we can apply it out as we go. So we wouldn't know what the total is for, for, let's say, the month in overhead, and especially for things like the utility bill and rent and uh, depreciation, because we don't record those till the end. So this this factory overhead number, the actual factory overhead number, will be much higher in the end of the month, most likely. And we're going to need to include those even in jobs that we had at the beginning of the month. That's one problem. Another problem is that these jobs are not all the same size. Like if you if you imagine a construction company, some of these jobs could be much larger than other jobs. And so even if we knew the exact number of what will be an overhead at the end of the month, we couldn't apply them to the jobs evenly because the jobs are different sizes. That should that doesn't seem right to do that. So what we need to do is one, come up with some type of estimate of what we think total overhead would be so we can apply it out correctly. And then two, we need to find some way to apply out more to, to the large jobs and less to the small jobs. That's our task. So the way we're going to do that is one, we're going to have an estimate of what we think, uh, is, is a good driver of the overhead. How do we know which jobs are large and small? One way is we can say, well, the, the jobs that have more direct labor are larger than the other jobs. So we could use direct labor as a kind of ratio for us to apply out more to some jobs than others. So in this case, job B15 had more direct labor than job B19. We would assume more overhead then should be applied to it. So, so we're going to use direct labor as, as not, not as part of overhead because it's direct labor. It's not overhead that went directly to work and process, but as a way to see how big one job is to another in comparative, a ratio type of analysis. So, and we're going to have to estimate it because we don't know this year what's going to happen. So we'll have to estimate it. Probably the most simple way is based on last year's numbers. We're going to look at last year's numbers, look at total direct labor, and then make any adjustments we have to it. And then we're also going to look at the total factory overhead probably from last year or last month, last month's overhead <laughs> and figure out how much the it was and then make any adjustments to it for this month that we think based on our projections. And then what we'll do is we'll just take the overhead divided by uh, the direct labor and use that as a ratio. And if we do that, that's where we're getting this uh, 1.6. So we're going to think that you know, we're going to imagine that that process happened. We made some type of estimate about what we think the predetermined overhead rate was based on last uh, last year's numbers and projections into the future. We based uh, the direct labor, same thing. We made an estimate of what we think it will be for the entire month this time based on last year. And we use direct labor because it's going to give us a, a cost driver that will be relevant to know how big a job is in relation to the other jobs. And then we divided them out and said that we're going to get a predetermined overhead rate of 1.6. So what we're going to, so now once we have that, uh, once we're at this point, uh, then it becomes pretty easy to apply this out. It's still a little bit more difficult to explain. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the job cost sheets over here. And, and what we're going to say, so now we'll scroll over to our job cost sheets and we'll apply this out per job. And hopefully this will make more sense as we do so. So we're going to scroll over. Here's our job cost sheets here. And here's our formula for the predetermined overhead rate. It's the estimated manufacturing overhead cost divided by the estimated total units in the, in the allocation base. Again, the fact that it's an estimate could be a little bit, uh, we could have a very detailed type of estimate, or we basically could use last year's uh, manufacturing overhead or last month's manufacturing overhead divided by the total units uh, in the activity base, which in our case is the direct labor. Uh, so we're using direct labor in order to, to apply this out. We're going to say we came up with 1.6 based on that estimate. Uh, once we have that, then all we have to do is say, okay, the factory overhead that we're going to apply to say job B15 is just going to be equal to the direct labor that's in this job times 1.6. And that's going to give us the amount that we're going to apply of factory overhead. 
So it's just an estimate. And remember, factory overhead is all that stuff. We're just going to put it into a bucket and apply more of it to the larger jobs based on this kind of ratio analysis. Then we're going to go here and do the same thing. We're going to say this equals the 900 times 1.6. So the factory overhead is uh, 1,440. Of course, it's lower because the direct labor is lower. And it has nothing to do with the direct labor. Factory overhead does not. But the direct labor is just being used to see how big one job is compared to the other. So then we're going to go over here and do the same thing for job uh, B17. It equals the direct labor times 1.6. And we're going to be here in uh, AN19 equals the 850 times 1.6. And then we'll do the same for uh, B19 equals 690 times 1.6. Okay, so there's our, there's our information. Now note that this, this could be done with direct labor. We could use some other type of activity base. We use the, the cost, direct labor cost. We could use hours, direct labor hours, rather than, uh, rather than the dollar amount. We could use, uh, some type of materials, direct materials. We, uh, and use that as the activity base and do this calculation based on, uh, on the direct materials, whatever we think would be the best driver for us to say how much should, of the overhead should be applied to one job versus the other. How big is one job versus the other? That's what we're going to basically be using in order to allocate this out. Okay, so given that then, um, that's what we're gonna apply on a job by job basis. Now let's go back to our journal entry. The journal entry that we're gonna make is gonna be taking it out of factory overhead and putting it into work in process because we know which jobs are gonna be uh, used at this time. So our journal entry then is gonna be work in process debit. It has a debit balance. We're gonna make it increase by doing the same thing to it another debit. So I'm going to right click and copy work in process and B22 right click and paste one, two, three, and it's going to come out of factory overhead. So factory overhead, this number is going to go down J11. I'm going to right click and copy, put that in B23, right click and paste one, two, three. Now you might think it should be that 7,100 that's in there. But remember, that's just an estimate, and we may be doing this as we go, so we don't even know what the total number will be at the end of the month. And, and it's not going to be exact because we're estimating here, so we don't, we don't know what it's going to be off for sure. So there's a couple ways we can, we can do this. We can say, okay, the direct labor so far for each job is uh, 4,200. So we can go here. It's going to be equal 4,200 times 1.6 which is uh 6720 that should be the debit and the credit we can also of course go to the job sheets and say what what did we do in the jobs well we took all of these direct labor numbers let's just do it with excel it's going to be this number i'm holding down control highlighting this number this number this number and this number adds up to 6,720. So that's what we're using. So I'm going to, and, and of course it's the same number because if it's just uh, a, a ratio. So if we add up all the totals here and multiply it at times 1.6, we'll get the, we'll get the same number. So we'll go all the way to the left again. So there's going to be our journal entry. So let's post this out now. Here's the work in process. Here's work in process. So it's like, uh, what is that? The fourth account. So we're going to go to work in process. We can now post it to work in process because it's now supported by the uh, job accounts. So we're in S11 equals. Going to scroll back down to that 6,720 and enter. That brings the balance from 6,430 up by 6,720 to the 13,150. And that then, or this number, is being used to create the trial balance, we're out of balance by 6,720. Then we're gonna record the other side, the factory overhead. Here's factory overhead, it's going down this time. So it's here and it's down here on our trial balance. So we wanna credit this time. So we're in T29, we're gonna say this equals, we're going to this credit in D23, it's gonna bring this 7,100 down by 6,000 uh, 720 to 380. 
And again, it's not exact. You'll notice it's off a little bit because we're at the end of the month right now. Those are all our jobs for the month. It's still not exact because we had to, we had to use an estimate. So, and that's fine. We're going to say that's okay. And, uh, that should put us back in balance in here. Brings the factory overhead down. Work in process now having that account still no effect on net income because we haven't, uh, sold anything yet. All we're doing is shuffling the stuff around in the inventory accounts. And now the work in process here is supported. So we, we moved it out of factory overhead up to here using an estimate. And when we so did, we can back this up by the, by the detail in the general ledger. And we can also support it with the jobs. So the jobs now being basically complete in that they have direct labor or direct materials, direct labor and factory overhead. If we add up all the jobs, they, they are consist of these jobs, including direct materials, direct labor and overhead for each. That of course ties out to what's on the trial balance. So the trial balance number is now supported not only by the GL account, but also by the subsidiary account in a similar way as the G, as the accounts receivables, not only supported by the GL account, but a subsidiary account by customer. The work in process is count is not only supported by the GL account, but by a subsidiary account by jobs.